here you touch a very important point so the human sentient where is the stage we are right now and actually there's already a couple of for instance, i'm working ai and at the moment i'm actually becoming scared with what i can do with our teams so and of course there was recently the the google uh engineer that was fired because he said that one of the ai shit bots became sentient um and i don't think we are very far from that but one of the things you touch is we want the machines to serve us and like you said the good future but at the moment the challenge is and i will probably go to um uh, i don't remember the quote completely from from uh, uh um uh, Sally Krabberick is that humans are a bit like they can be a fantastic force for good but they can be as well as a virus that destroy everything around them and if you look at the last 35 30,000 years of human uh, at least homo sapiens uh, definitely we would destroy a huge part of the globe to build our own habitat and of course there was partly for survival but part for evolution and part for humanity so if you look at uh, technology versus humanity your last book uh, which is uh, all about these areas. The challenge that we are right now is that are you seeing technology as a part of the evolution of our own humanity that will be replacing us because that's what we did with the with the world, with humanity, or a bit more a vision that is more humanist that effectively you can actually control technology. Because I, what I find, and, and I'm talking very personal, the challenge I'm finding as technologist and as an author as well is as a technologist is that if I'm an entrepreneur and I want to uh, really get results, I really cannot be always on the good side of humanity. I need to be on the strong side of humanity. That doesn't mean I'm not good, but it's being good. You have to break dishes and take forward. And when you look at technology, if I put myself in the code that developers are doing in the UK or London or Russia or China, the ethics and uh, different parts. And that is where it comes, I think, your expertise. I'm particularly interested in this. And I think this is the biggest challenge we're facing as humans right now. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a much bigger challenge than climate change, right? For example, <laughs> I know it's perverse much to say bigger. that, but, but uh, you know, climate change, we're going to solve. We have the tech, we have the science, we got to put the money in, we have to change our habits, but you know, we are going to solve climate change in the next decade or two. Uh, in that time frame, we're going to have to suffer through two degrees of warming, at least, maybe more. But once we are there, we can work backwards, you know, because we'll have new tech to actually fix it. But so that, to me, is is a, a very much a concern because of the suffering in the next two de decades, right? But generally speaking, I think we can do that. Yeah. What is really an issue is is how much technology uh, we are cultivating and creating that goes beyond our own understanding, yeah, uh, and that enables machine machines to connect to each other and and uh, basically create networks of super intelligences and and also of course can be used as weapons of war which is the primary story of our technology of course <laughs> nuclear weapons and then very soon artificial general intelligence can be used for war and beyond that genetic engineering right can be used for the same purpose so the thing is that we don't want to stop inventing and we don't want to really stronghold technology or science to not develop right but we have to create a framework of what we desire as the outcome, right? Uh, and just like nuclear weapons, which we invented, and then we had two bombs, you know, we figured that not everybody should have a bomb uh, because it was re relatively easy to make. Uh, well, not easy, but relatively easy, right? And we didn't want 100,000 bombs going off, right? That would be the end of it. So we had the non-proliferation treaty, right? Now we're here with artificial intelligence, which by and large is just intelligent assistance right now. It's really IA, not AI, right? It's just smart software that does things better, right? But when we cultivate this further and we're thinking about machines that have a potential logic IQ of say 1 billion, right? <laughs> that would become a certain point where we are no longer, we can't contain it where it is, right? We would have to figure out what is the cutoff and, and who is actually in charge of this regulation, right? Is it everybody by themselves, or is it China versus America versus Europe versus Russia? Unlikely, or India, right? I mean, that would be that could end very badly for us. So my argument has always been that uh, the important question is here: What do we want from this, right? And do we want to replace ourselves, or do we want to basically become superhuman? That is, of course, Elon Musk's argument, and also many others in the Bay Area and 
and Ray Kurzweil and others, right? So that we can live forever and compete or, or keep up with the machines. Right? My argument has been, if we did that, we would probably lose what makes us human, right? Because all these things like dying, right? Or things that have been part of human life for a long time, they are definitely a part of who we are. And it's great if we can live a, a fantastic life to be 150. Yeah, that would be fantastic if it was available for everybody, but endless, right? And only the rich. And so we have so many issues piling up here that the most important thing is that we define what is the goal? Is the goal good for everybody, right? And is there a part of that process where we would lose control of what we are creating? You know, it's like the biological warfare labs, right? I mean, everybody has them. All militaries have them, but we don't want them to be uncontrolled. Right? I mean, that would be the end of things. So I think that is a very, very important question. And that's why I've been talking about a moratorium on artificial general intelligence, not an AI in principle, but on the top level. Um, to, to enforce collaboration, because if we did have an AGI that was really just something that works for us, that could be amazing, right? But but if we if we have one that is uncontrolled or that is com competing between different nations, that could end very badly for us. Uh, probably much worse than a nuclear weapon. Um, and so that's something I'm concerned about and and working on quite a bit is to find that balance between you know, too little and too much. <laughs>